Welcome back. In this video, we will be looking at the basic idea of a biological neuron. The reason for talking about this is historical. Um, as we saw in the last videos, uh, when we look at the XOR gate, we required one extra layer between the input and the output in order to actually represent the XOR function accurately. Now, as it turns out, even before the XOR gate example, lot of people had the idea that if they could somehow replicate the functioning of a human brain or at least of a, the neuron in the brain, that they could somehow replicate all of human thinking. Now, before I discuss the biological neuron, I will do it very, very briefly, but I want to point out that this analogy is in my opinion at least and in the opinion of Dr. Ganapati also, it is not quite sound. Uh, several people say this, neuroscience is a completely different area and even computational neuroscience is very, very different from what we do in actual neural networks, which you will be seeing in the next few videos. Uh, computational neuroscience works on extremely complex uh, phenomenon and they try to replicate what we will be showing here far more accurately than what we will be doing. Uh, when we show the artificial neuron, which we will do in the next video, that is just going to be a toy case. And the reason why it works is basically mathematical rather than anything to do with a physical analogy between the brain and the neural network. Despite it being very popular in the media to talk about uh, neural networks as if they were simulations of brains and this is certainly a buzzword today, uh, we think that this is not accurate. Much like birds fly and aeroplanes are not actually trying to replicate what birds do, you know, you do not have flapping wing aircraft even today. But nonetheless, you can take some inspiration from birds, but what you are looking at is the basic principle. Uh, just like in the for bird flight or for aircraft flight, a basic principle is whatever lift that the wing generates has to be balanced by the weight of the body, whether it is an airplane or a bird. Similarly, we are trying to replicate some very, very, very rudimentary principles in learning, which is what we will try to do. So, to come back to a biological neuron, um, I am certainly not a biologist. So, this image roughly represents what happens in a biological neuron. So, this is the neuron cell at the cell body and what happens whenever we get an input, whether it is through the eyes, which Dr. Ganapati will be covering in detail in the next week, you know how you know our visual system works, but whether it is the eyes or your auditory system, finally when it goes to the brain, you actually have multiple source of inputs. Let us take the analogy of an eye, just like we in an image you have pixels, a lot of information comes from various sources. So, we can see input nodes, these are called dendrites. So, all these finally feed in into one single neuron. Okay. Okay. It is possible that you know a single neuron can have as complex a feature uh, a function as recognizing a specific face, say that of your mother or something of that sort. So, in that case you will get all these inputs uh, from your mother's photo or from your mother's picture coming from each input cell. You can think of this as analogous to the features that we have in our usual diagram. Okay. And all these feed in into one place. Now, when all of them feed into one place, we can think of that operation as if it is a summation. Okay. Now, what you do, what the neuron apparently does is when all these come, the electrical signal either fires or it does not fire okay? or it fires somewhere in between. Again, I am not a neuroscientist, so I am just going to give an approximate picture of what happens. So, now all these things come in and then maybe below a certain threshold, the neuron so to speak does not wake up and above a certain threshold, it wakes up okay? or it fires. You can think of this as if you know somebody is shaking you in order to wake you up and below a certain threshold if they do it very, very lightly you would not wake up, but if they shake you heavily you will wake up. Similarly, the neuron activates
only after a certain amount of electrical signal all these inputs coming together activated. You will notice that this picture is somewhat similar to the sigmoid that we had when we were dealing with logistic regression. Okay. So, as it turns out these simple combination is what more or less defines a neural network. This is our abstraction or our cartoon picture of how a neuron works which is lot of inputs come through the dendrites, they come into the neural cell, they sum up there which we also did whether we did it in linear regression or logistic regression we sum it up and then it either activates or it does not or it activates intermediately which is what we did with a sigmoid. Okay. Now, after that the output is called an axon. Now, the output could be single or it could be multiple okay, depending on whether you have one class or multiple class when we are doing a neural network and what connects it in between uh, in uh, neuroscience terminology is what is called the myelin sheath. What happens with myelin sheaths is that they get thicker and thicker as you generate memories which are stronger and stronger. That is if you repeat an action okay, whether it is writing, running, cycling etcetera this sheath tends to thicken as you do the same activity again and again. Now, all that abstracted out what I want to point out is there is a simple abstract structure for this whole process which is what we will be using for the rest of the course which is that of multiple features as input coming up together summing and then you have some kind of activation. We will repeat this abstract picture in the next video where we will look at the idea of an artificial neuron instead of a biological neuron. Thank you.